Over the past years, the film industry has named many brilliant works as cinematic classics. Films such as Citizen Kane, Casablanca, Psycho, and many more are widely known in this industry for the techniques and skills used to make these films. One of the classics that is very popular till this day is The Godfather. This story is about an Italian-American family running a crime organization and is being told through the perspective of the one and only Francis Ford Coppola. Coppola first started out wanting to be a theatre director. However, after attending UCLA, he had the intention of working in Hollywood. One of his very first work was a full-length nude feature called Tonight For Sure. It was more of a comical film rather than an erotic one. At that time, an independent producer named Roger Corman was looking for assistance, which led to him hiring Coppola. Coppola ended up as one of the sound engineers on The Young Racers, a film that Corman was shooting. After realizing that $20,000 was left from this project, Coppola suggested that they shoot a second film with this money. A script written in three days and shot in nine, Dementia 13 was born. But Corman was unhappy with the turnout of the film, resulting in the end of their collaboration. Even though his work with Corman ended, Coppola still received many opportunities during his journey. Some cost him a fortune and major setbacks, while others managed to get him back on his feet. One of these opportunities that made him who he is today is a chance to make The Godfather. At first, when he read the original novel, he was not as intrigued or excited for it. However, after breaking everything down and writing the screenplay with the author of the novel, Mario Puzo, Coppola started his journey on making this Hollywood classic. He did not have an easy journey. Halfway through the making of this film, he had an anxiety breakdown and was hiding in the toilet after hearing a few technicians making fun of his incompetence and were anticipating his replacement. Coppola wondered to himself why did he take up this project as he preferred to shoot original screenplays. If though this film caused a mental toll on Coppola, he still managed to stick through the entire time, resulting in a great outcome. When The Godfather was released, it gave Hollywood a new lease of life. Coppola is a very prominent figure in the new Hollywood film movement, alongside Steven Spielberg, George Lucas, and many more. New Hollywood is also known as American New Wave. It is a movement that is being used for three generations of American filmmakers. Coppola is involved in the second generation of this movement. He first started out by making a film adapted from a novel called You're a Big Boy Now and was selected to be shown at the 1967 Cannes Film Festival. During his journey as an aspiring filmmaker, Coppola met George Lucas. They started out a studio called Zotrope. But soon, the company went bankrupt after a few mishaps with George Lucas's debut feature THX 1138. New Hollywood was also known for the adaptations of popular novels at that time. As Coppola has made many films that are adapted from novels, this makes him part of this film movement. At that time, the filmmakers made films that reflected real life. They are focused more on the character rather than the plot to drive the story. In other words, they rely heavily on actual human drama than a specific genre. Coppola has made multiple films that reflect real life, films such as Apocalypse Now and The Godfather. The New Hollywood Movement was active when the Vietnam War happened. Apocalypse Now was inspired by the Vietnam War and a novel called Heart of Darkness. After being rejected by the studio, Coppola decided to produce this film himself. After going through hardships and suffering, he finally managed to complete filming at the Philippines. Coppola was also well known in the New Hollywood film movement as his films are shown in a more narrative and artistic manner. In this movement, any form of straightforward narration is hardly seen. The actions of characters have layers and deeper meanings to them. Narration can also be told through other ways such as cinematography and editing. They use these methods to tell the story and set a certain mood for the audience. For example, in Body and Clyde's opening sequence, the use of quick cuts and uncomfortable framings exuberates a feeling of restlessness and a distinct sense of sexual hunger of our characters. All in all, the filmmakers in this film movement uses editing not only for continuity, but also as an artistic tool to tell the story. This practice is inspired by European art films and classical Hollywood film directors such as D.W. Griffith and Alfred Hitchcock. Coppola is big on family, making a recurrent theme in all his films. Whether by birth or under random circumstances, all his films have a symbol or gesture of family in them. Coppola's film style has many layers. 
One of them would be where he changes his characters in adaptations, making them the opposite of who they really are. For example, in Bram Stoker's Dracula, the evil creation in literature also known as the Dracula is merely a sympathetic and noble hero in the film. In The Godfather, the mafia is being portrayed as more human than an unforgiving monster. Another layer is the definition of identity and cultural roots. Coppola's films are full of the main character trying to find himself or is on a journey to being who he really is. Coppola is very big on irony. You can tell by the scenes in The Godfather when everyone is enjoying Connie's wedding, Will's Vito is doing business in his office, and when Michael is at the baptism while the execution of the heads of the five families ordered by him is being done. Coppola brings the audience into the film's world through editing, sound, and cinematography. The famous scene in The Godfather is when Michael is at the christening of his newborn nephew. He orders his couples and buttons to kill the heads of the five families. The cross-cutting contradicts what is happening in each scene. As Michael renounces Satan and his works at the church, his henchmen are making the kills ordered by him. This shows the audience his character as a new dawn of the family. Sound also plays a part in this scene. The music elaborates on how horrible these killings would be, enhancing the ambience for the audience. As for cinematography, as the trilogy progresses, Coppola inserts more shots of Michael alone, sitting and thinking. This shows that as the dawn of a crime organisation, he ends up alone, estranged from his family most of the time due to the deeds he has done as a gangster. Even though he was doing the right thing for his family, he still ended up alone. In The Godfather Part 3, as family grows in both power and corruption, Coppola applies equally forceful images and oral signifiers. Images such as the Mafia gives off a cathartic and hubristic feel. Nowadays, we don't hear much of Coppola as a director anymore, but more of a producer. He believes that the industry these days is more interested in making commercial films than experimental ones. Coppola said in an interview that he was, quote, no longer interested enough to put in extraordinary effort a film takes, end quote. Even though Coppola does not put out films as a director anymore, I can safely say that his name will carry on for future generations as he has made films in the past that will stay in the times to come.